let me welcome you at the third keynote speech. Today we have two distinguished guests, Professor Olivier Grau and uh, a chair, Antonio Somaini. But before we start, let me uh, announce three things. First of all, I would like to introduce you to the next general meeting, which will be after the keynote speech. If you are a next member, you are warmly invited to this meeting. Uh, if you if you prefer to have a drink, you are invited to Daleko Blisko, the same place as yesterday. Mm. 100 free beers for participants of our conference is waiting at the place. And the third announcement, uh, Publisher Forum, forum uh, uh, ends tomorrow, and the lunch break will be the last time to buy books. So, yeah? So if you want to make some... Um, if you want to make some books, uh, uh, buy some books, that's the last uh, chance to do so. Um, let's start with the conversation. Professor Grau, you're invited. Thank you very much, uh, Eva. Uh, I'm really delighted uh, on behalf of uh, all our community to present uh, this third keynote lecture entitled uh, The Complex Expression of Digital Art by Professor Oliver Grau, who uh, was appointed in 2005 full professor in Bildwissenschaft, translated as image science or image theory, at the, the, the Donau Universität Krems, where he's now head of the Bildwissenschaft department. Uh, this professorship was the first in uh, German-speaking countries, and it was, I think, a very symbolic moment uh, which marked the first full academic recognition of a research domain, Bild Wissenschaft, which has so many points in common with the two domains we deal here, film and media studies. Uh, Professor Grau's research focuses on the history of media and digital art, on the genealogy of dispositives of immersion, as well as on the history of the ideas of telepresence and artificial life. Among his many publications, which have been translated in 14 different languages, I would like to recall his four main books. Uh, the first one, Virtual Art from Illusion to Immersion, published by MIT Press in 2003, on the genealogy of immersive spaces from the different immersive visual strategies in the classical world to Baroque perspectival illusionistic spaces, from 19th century panoramas to environments of visual, virtual reality. Uh, a second book that he edited together with Andreas Keil in uh, 2005 is entitled Mediale Emotionen, that is media emotions on the steering of emotions through images and sounds. And it deals with the history of different techniques and dispositives used to steer emotions through images and sound from the Isenheim Altar by Matthias Grunewald to Leni Riefenstahl's film Triumph of the Will, all the way to the first person shooter video game American Army, developed by the US Army in order to promote recruiting. His third book, it's an edited book entitled Media Art History, published by MIT Press and Leonardo Books in 2007, and it deals with the history of media art with uh, an um, interdisciplinary approach and contributions by different media and visual historians. And finally, the latest uh, edited book is entitled Imagery in the 21st Century, again, MIT Press, 2011, edited with Thomas Feigl. It's a collective volume with contributions, among others, by Sean Cobbett, James Elkins, Martin Kemp, Lev Manovich, Peter Weibel, and several other scholars. The questions of archives and and for the future, the title of our conference, has been widely present in Professor Grau's work, who is deeply involved in the theory and practice of digital humanities. In 2014, he published an article in the World Financial Review entitled, Our Digital Culture Threatened by Loss. And in the past years, he has been fighting hard, so to say, to avoid such loss. For example, by developing the first international archive of digital art in 1999, in the context of a research project entitled Immersive Art and financed by the German Research Foundation, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. Then by establishing the platform for the history of media art, science and technology, entitled MediaArtHistory.org. 
and finally by supervising the organization and the online presentation of the database of the Gutweig graphic collection, the largest private graphic collection in Austria, which contains over 30,000 works and is accessible online since 2007. His keynote lecture of today, entitled The Complex Expression of Digital Art, will deal with the role of digital art within the context of a society more and more structured through digital networks and with the problem of how to archive and preserve such art forms in order to prevent and avoid their loss. Please join me in welcoming Professor Oliver Grau. Je cieszę się, że jestem znowu w Polsce. So thank you very much for having me here. Um, thanks to the European Network for Cinema and Media Studies. A little bit as, a, as an outsider in your community, as an art historian, me media art historian, I'm very uh, grateful for the invitation and um, also thank you very much for the introduction. <coughs> um, I also see a number of colleagues, although you're very far away at the moment, uh, who I know since a number of years, and so glad to uh, have, uh, have the chance to talk with, to you. So I was also asked, um, where is the Stanley University, since it's quite a new university, and it's uh, just uh, 15 years old, old, as you see here, it's in the beautiful World Heritage Wachau, where we, um, and it was already mentioned, have various archive, the Gottbike archive, and also the, the um, ADA, the a digital archive and uh, it's also we have um, programs in this 900 year old monastery and then also in the brand new university which i mentioned and um, it's also a very nice wine region so come along <coughs> over the last 50 years media art has evolved into a vivid contemporary factor although and can you see um, those images maybe we should still a little bit more uh, dim down the uh, the light, and then later on for discussion, we can uh, have, a, have, it, um, have it back on. So over the last 50 years, media art has evolved great into a vivid contemporary factor. Although there are well-attended festivals, worldwide collaborative projects, discussion forums, and database documentation, media art is still too rarely collected by museums, barely supported within the mainframe of art history, and with relatively low accessibility for public and scholars compared to traditional art forms like painting or sculpture, digital media art has a multifarious and complex potential of expression and visualization, and therefore, <coughs> although underrepresented uh, at the art market, which follows other interests, it became, we might say, the legitimate, the art of our time. Thematizing complex challenges of our life and societies like genetic engineering and the rise of post-human bodies, globalization and ecological crises, the explosion of human knowledge, the image and media revolution, the virtualization of finance markets and new extremes of surveillance of human communication. Just to name a few theme clusters, my research team empirically identified by examining the most important media art festivals of the last decade, so like Asetonica, Transmediale, Fire, Brazil, and, and all those festivals. <coughs> Visually powerful, Interactive media art, perhaps supported by databases or attached to the World Wide Web, is offering more and more degrees of freedom and evidently is much better equipped to deal with the challenges of our complex time than traditional art media can. Also, although ZKM's biennial project shows that digital art has played a seminal role in some 200 biennials around the globe, and a survey by our FAF, so that's the Austrian Research Foundation, um, found the project ATMA at Danube University noted that there are more than 100 festivals <coughs> dedicated to digital art, only dedicated to digital art. <coughs> um, but those complex art f uh, and image forms able to do that have almost not arrived into the core collecting institutions of our societies, the museums, archives, libraries, founded by us, the tax-paying public. 
<clears throat> Due to this fact that this art depends entirely on digital storage methods, which are in a constant state of change and development, digital art is severely at risk. And it is no exaggeration to state that we face the total loss of an art form from the early times of our post-industrial digital societies. And I will come back to that later. It is ironic that this loss takes place in a time where the world of images around us changes faster than ever. The internet revolution with giants like YouTube or Flickr with its billion uploads or Facebook with its 1.4 or more billion members are, are now the largest image archives as, as we know in the world. Television, <coughs> now in 3D, became a zappy field of thousands of channels. Large projection screens enter cities, buildings, surfaces melt with moving images, recreating the old dream of talking architecture. <clears throat> Surgery becomes more and more image-guided. Drone war kills through uh, telematic imagery and Google Street View and Google Earth revolutionize concepts of panoramic image spaces, including satellite views, for example, of Danube University Center for Image Science in Göteborg. <coughs> so images historical development between innovation, reflection, and iconoclasm reaches a new level of global complexity. Digital images became ubiquitous and key tools within the global reorganization of work, but transformations have hit society unprepared. Some, and some results of our research you may also find in our volume by MIT Press, which was just mentioned. It was an international shock when we became aware of the worldwide attack on economic, political, military, scientific, and basically all civil communication, <coughs> even all phone calls by NSA and the British GCHQ, when documents made public by Edward Snowden first were published by The Guardian and The Washington Post. Among the t uh, targeted nations are Argentina, Brazil, India, Mexico, except the UK, all members of the European Union, Turkey, China, South Korea, Russia, Japan, and many others. Almost all world communication, as we know, why telephone and the internet giants like um, Google, Facebook, Amazon, has been systematically taped and stored in zettabytes in the largest ever existing archive. The vision of big data <coughs> created the largest surveillance machine in human history, and it comes in a form we have no cultural experience with. Now, browsing websites and simply buying a book at Amazon <coughs> and being evaluated as a human being is no fundamental difference anymore. This amalgamation of internet industry and civilian machinery was neither foreseen by scientists, sci-fi writers, nor George Orwell himself. Now markets and products control the consumers, select and evaluate us. With software by companies like Glimmerglass, NSA searches through your personal data on Facebook, email, chat, Skype, or telephone, creating your profile. So while our own secret services, for the first time, know everything about us citizens, <coughs> we are almost completely excluded by our own museums and archives from reflecting on the issues of our time through its uh, contemporary media-related art. So it's a bit ironic situation we have. Although by law it is the duty of almost all museums to collect, preserve, and document the art of its time, this is simply not done, as we know, in an adequate and concerted way. And this disparity in societies with an art system based on tax-paying citizens, as in Europe, even creates a serious democratic political problem. So we know that media artists today are shaping highly disparate areas <coughs> and complex areas like time-based installation art, telepresence art, genetic and bio art, robotics, net art and space art, experimenting with nanotechnology, artificial or A-life art, creating virtual agents and avatars, mixed realities and database supported art. Digital art addresses often many senses, visually, orally and beyond, thereby technically exceeds and transforms that of traditional art forms such as painting or sculpture, and offers a manifold potential for expression and visualization. In the best humanistic tradition, digital art frequently takes on big contemporary discussions, challenges, dangers, and proposed transformations of our life and societies. It addresses 
the challenges of our complex time within the very medium that shapes them, <coughs> where traditional art media could simply offer metaphorical approaches. Thus, digital art is the art form with the most comprehensive potential in the reflection of our information societies regarding the digital revolution. So because digital art uses new technologies, it has developed a large number of innovative visual expressions and increasingly operates transculturally, interdisciplinary. It cannot be fully understood without our image history. So let me now give a few examples for digital art's multifarious potential of complex expression. Thousands of artworks make use of and express the complex and multifarious potential of media art and in the classic installations, Osmos and Ephemia from 95 and 98 of Charlotte Davies transports us into a visually powerful 3D simulation of a lush mineral vegetable sphere, which we can explore via a body intimate interface consisting of a west that monitors breathing. Both works are classics of digital media art that generated more than 100 scientific and art historic articles but were ignored by museum collections. In fact, you can find, although 100 scientific articles, no museum shows them. <coughs> because digital art is located at the intersection of art, science, and technology, it addresses and participates in contemporary scientific research. Digital art raises awareness of ethical and technological issues and discussions, and discusses and visualizes the complexity of biotech innovation and genetic hybridity as thematized in Korn van Mechelen's long-term cosmopolitan chicken project in 2013, but open-ended questions about the complicated ethical issues involved in the manipulation of DNA were raised already in Eduardo Katz's installation Genesis in 99. With the advent of the digital era, media and visual culture started to undergo a profound shift. Those developments were reflected in a variety of digital art projects, on the one hand from a contemporary and on the other hand from a historical comparative perspective. Consequently, this, uh, this perspective replaces an ahistorical account of uh, imagery in favor of historical and genealogical approaches such as image or media revolution in media art histories. Artists from the field of digital art use and reflect on a variety of technologies such as virtual reality, augmented reality, and telepresence, Art and artists like uh, Jeffrey Shaw, for example, pioneered in the use of virtual reality and, and um, AR. For Unmakeable Love in 2007, inspired by Samuel Beckett's The Lost Ones, Shaw and Sarah Kenderdine used their cybernetic theatrical environment reactor to create a real-time augmented world of 30 simulated humans. The dark space or prison camp formed by a hexagon of six rare projected silver screens results in a powerful reappearance of the phantasmagoria. <coughs> Internationally renowned artists like Misha Kubal, Maurice Binayou and Rafael Onsano Hammer, M Michael Neymark and others have created optical experiments, panoramas, phantasmagoria, dioramas, camera, camera obscura, anamorphosis, magic lanterns, etc. and also I got that here. <coughs> and also William Kentridge, one of the most known artists of our time, has been working on the subject of a history of vision for years, as we know. Even historic image media like the mirror anamorphosis have made their way into his contemporary media art. In 2007, he created a hybrid previously non-existent in the media history of seeing for his eight-minute short, What Will Come Has Already Come, he combines a hand-drawn animation film with cylindrical mirror anamorphosis, connecting it for the first time to moving images and thereby helping us to put the latest image revolution in a historical perspective. Reinterpreting old optical media, they contextualize and help to reflect on our digital image revolution and which traditional art form could do that. Valuable contributions to the de debates about the dis discourse and biological transformation of the body came from festivals. Digital art raised awareness of technical developments by providing models of artificial life or the positive usage of anthropometrics. 
Acclaimed artists like Christa Sommerer and Laurent Mignonot brought forward a variety of projects such as the Life Species um, in, two, in uh, 1997 and Victoria Vesna's Bodies Incorporated in 93 allowed visitors to construct their own bodies and their own avatars. Using a variety of web tools, the users could create a 3D representation of their body. Throughout the site, references are made to identity politics and other concepts used to separate and identify bodies. And Golden Nika winner <coughs> Murmuring Fields by Fleischmann Strauss is yet another example of a work largely ignored by museums. Here, interacting users maneuver through a virtual space of media philosophy in which statements by Flusser, Virilio, Minsky and Weizenbaum can be heard, a new type of a Denkraum or sphere of thought and an entirely prefiguration of web-based knowledge exchange. <coughs> Digital art illustrates and reflects the developments of global networks and their influence on financial markets. Digital art and festivals uh, recurrently address this complex visual virtualization and globalization in a variety of projects, like Maurice Benayoun's Occupy World Screens in 2012, strategically visualizes global finance flows and networks in real time. Today, we know that the virtualization and increasing complexity of financial products is partly responsible for the crisis that costs us trillions of euros and dollars. Paolo Sirio, uh, Paolo Sirio's loophole for all 2013 illuminates the global condition of virtual financial markets and provides technical counter practices. And such projects help to reflect on the increasing complexity and opacity that is inherent in com contemporary financial markets. But already more than a decade ago, the architecture and art studio Asymptoti proposed a 3D infoscape for the New York Stock Exchange to manage financial data within a real-time virtual environment, providing a better, a more transparent image and thereby a better idea of transactions before we get driven into the next mega crash. The New York Stock Exchange did not want further development of uh, visualization of their financial products, at least since uh, Lehman Brothers bankruptcy in 2008, we can guess why. And Ingo Günther's <coughs> obsessive cartographic work, World Processor, an artwork that implicitly conveys the explosion, ubiquity, as well as the availability of data by the introduction and consolidation of digital media on illuminated globes, more and more appears as a clairvoyant prefiguration of um, the attempts of the growing visualization industries to make our complex time understood. From the late 80s until now, he destroyed more than 10,000 globes in his creative attempts to create a more realistic image of economy, power, and all kinds of meaningful parameters. At least since Edward Snowden's re release of documents, we know that Facebook also is systematically used for NSA surveillance. But already David Rokeby's very nervous system in 86 pinpointed the te technological means of detection and surveillance and Seiko Mikami's, Seiko Mikami who passed away a few months ago, in her robotic installation Desire of Codes in 2011, <coughs> dealt with this big issue of our time already before the worldwide espionage became known. And again, Paolo Sirio and uh, Alessandro Ludovico's face to Facebook in 2011 also addressed the issue in the form of a media hack performance, a social experiment. The artist stole one million Facebook profiles, filtered them with face recognition software, and then posted them on a custom-made dating website. <laughs> Searchable by gender and characteristics identified on the basis of their face facial expression. The performative Intervention generated approximately 1,000 items of media coverage around the world, 11 lawsuit threats, five death threats, and an exchange of letters between art the artists and Facebook. Also, issues of ecology and climate occupy an important place in festivals. Tom Corby's and 
Gavin, uh, Gavin, Gavin Bailey's uh, The Southern Ocean Studies from 2009, for example, understand complex climate models as cultural artifacts and as vehicles of communication of our uh, environmental change. By promoting knowledge of complex ecological problems and reflecting on conditions of the public and scientific discourse around climate and eco ecology on the question of how nature is constructed and visualized in the digital era. Digital art has made a genuine contribution to recurring discourses by developing new imaging strategies involving measurement of different complex spaces and natural phenomena through modern technologies and their translation into aesthetic and acoustic information like GPS, Google Maps, etc. And Andrea Polly's Sonic Antarctica in 2009 collects and processes uh, natural and industrial field, field recordings, sonifications and audifications of scientific data. And last but not least, <coughs> let me mention, um, and then you're then I try to give it, this was kind of an overview on all these different uh, branches of uh, complexity and of, of uh, and, and digital arts. And last but not least, let me mention um, a complex projects like the Choke Point uh, project, which addresses the uh, events of uh, the recent years when in Egypt and Libya, the order was given to turn off the internet. The P2P Foundation has the aim of mapping nodes of uh, internet connectivity and to show who maintains their control and what this may mean. So these examples might demonstrate that media art can deal with complex challenges as traditional art media simply can't. In the best humanistic traditions, digital media art takes on big contemporary questions and proposed transformations, but is not adequately collected, documented, and preserved by our public museums and archives. And a techno-cultural society that does not understand its challenges, which is not equally open for out of its time, is in trouble. The artworks mentioned produce their complexity through a set of temporal and spatial parameters, through multifarious creations of interfaces and partly by evolving display innovations. Vari variability, simultaneity, simul simultaneity. <laughs> Uh, sequentiality, narration, in innovative strategies of interaction through real-time processing and immersive environment. More content can be accessed through the use of visualizations of databases and web-based networks. Image spaces open for unfolding and compression development or evolution all represent important parameters for the re uh, research regarding the specific expressive potential of digital artworks. <coughs> So it is essential to create an understanding of the fact, or but it is ex essential to, uh, to create an understanding of the fact that um, the present image revolution, which uses new technolo technologies and has also developed a large number of so far unknown visual expressions, cannot be conceptualized without our image history, which is why the field of media art histories and its conference series agrees with the plea of its first honorary chair, Rudolf Arnheim, published in 2000, I think he was already 98 when he came up with this, uh, with this, for integrating the new interactive and processual worlds of images into the experiences and insights that have come down to us from the art of the past. So his words sounded like a plea for an interdisciplinary image science, and image science and media studies help understand the function of today's image worlds in their importance of building and forming societies by telling, for example, the history of illusion and immersion, the history of artificial life, or the tradition of telepresence. But there are, of course, many more histories. Media art history offers sub-histories of the present image revolution. Media art history might be considered as a, uh, as a, re a reservoir in which contemporary processes are embedded an anthropologic narration on the one hand and the political battleground where the clash of images is analyzed on the other. Furthermore, art historical methods may strengthen our political aesthetic analysis of the present through image analysis. <coughs> so all this sounds like redefining images in their historical dimension and approaches of comparison which go along with that are based on the insight that images act diachronic. Diachronic. 
within our historical evolution and not function simply without any reference. Image science or Bildwissenschaft now allows to write the history of the evolution of visual media from peep show to panorama, anamorphosis, stereoscope, magic lantern, <coughs> films with odors of, and colors, cinerama, IMAX, and the virtual image spaces of computers. It is, let me underscore, an evolution with breaks and detours. However, all its stages are distinguished by a relationship between art, science, image, and media. So already in the late 90s, it became clear that media art research is spread over many disciplines, as you know, and the need became urgent to give it uh, common ground. And the International Conference Series, um, which was started um, in 2005, so media art histories started in Banff in 2005, and there was even a previous uh, uh, planning conference before in 2003, through a collective process involving 30 advisors um, representing more than 10 disciplines related to media art, coordinating meanwhile more than 2,000 papers and applications on mediahistory.org. And through the uh, success of the following conference in, in Berlin, 2007, Melbourne, 2009, Liverpool, and Riga, and now the, conf uh, the conference is uh, well established with an um, uh, upcoming conference in Montreal this fall in uh, October, actually, so feel invited. <coughs> So we might say that media art histories help to understand the function of today's image worlds in their importance of building and forming societies. Let me say that once again. Media, as you know, exerts a general influence on forms of perceiving space, objects, and time, and they are tied inextricably to humankind's evolution of sense faculties. For how people see and what they see are not simple physiological questions. They are complex cultural processes, as we know. Not least, in this way, light can be shed on the genesis of new media, which are frequently encountered for the first time in works of art as utopian or visionary models. Therefore, a central problem of current cultural policy stems from a serious lack of knowledge about the origins of audiovisual media. And this is in complete contradiction to current demands for more media and image competence. <coughs> But compared to media archaeology, media art histories compares also the content, focuses on the imagery, its relation, contexts, and evolution. The imagery art is a driving force of technological and media development by often artistic inven inventions, fulfilling the artistic will. That is one focus of media art histories, and media art histories also discusses questions of historiography, of course, methodology, and the role of institutions of media art. The function of inventions, artistic practice, and collaborative networks, the prominent role of sound during the last decades, and emphasizes the importance of intercultural and pop culture themes. So media art histories contains media, arche media archaeology and is also related to the history of technology, the history of science, history of art, of course, film studies, sound and media, visual and theater studies. Also architecture, visual psychology, anthropology, and computer science, just to name the most um, represented disciplines in this uh, interdisciplinary framework. And building bridges for media art means also to further the establishment of new curricula as we develop the first international master of arts and media art histories with faculty members like Aki Huchtamo, Lefmanovic, Christiane Paul, or Sean Cubitt, which deals also with the practice and ex expertise in uh, curation, collect, uh, collecting, preserving, and archiving of media arts. It's a master for media arts working professionals. Um, the average student is even 35 years old, so <coughs> and they come now at the moment from five continents. And there's also, a, a, if you're interested in that, there's also a Facebook uh, forum with now most more than 6,000 members mostly academia and media artists. So dealing very much with visual phenomena, I see media art histories related to image science. And as you know, with strong representation from art history, image science, and its sister discipline of visual studies in the Anglo-Saxon tradition encourages interdisciplinary connections with history of science, neuroscience, psychology, philosophy, communication studies, and emotional research as well. 
in contrast to other disciplines concerned with images, ones that frequently try to explain images as isolated phenomena, originated in and from themselves, media art histories has the critical potential to define images in the historical dimension, which is the discipline's primary strength, I would say. Precisely because art history emphasizes a rigorous historization and the precise and the practice of a critical power of reflection, it can make the most natural possible contributions to the discussion around images. No image can be read if one has read no other images before. You all know that, of course. <clears throat> so scientific work with images is based on three preconditions, and let me say this from the perspective of image science, which is probably also very, very close to, to film studies, but starting with a definition of the object and then building or using and um, hopefully large image archive and, and with lots of material to compare with. And third, a familiarity with a large quantity of, of, uh, of images. This enables and defines the understanding that images follow a diachronic logic without this historic base, image science remains superfluous and cannot realize its full potential. So all of these approaches of compa to comparison are based on the insight, and I say that again, that images act diachronic, this is really the, the core, within a historical evolution and never function simply as an act without any reference. Older definitions of the image, mostly developed with paintings such as those by Gottfried Böhm or Klaus Sachs-Hombach or W.J.T. Mitchell became problematic in the context of the digital age. <laughs> Talking generally on imagery, we need a wider understanding Beside earlier definitions of interactive, immersive, telematic, and generative digital images, I would like to introduce to a careful, crafted definition by uh, our colleague Thomas Hensel, and I think it's a very good start to outlining the problem. Images are not reducible to a particular technology, like graphic prints or neutron audiography, not to certain devices or tools like paintbrushes or telescopes, not to symbolic forms like perspective, not to genres in the broader sense, like still life or summation image, not to an institution like museum or lab, not to a, so, so, a social function like construction con or um, di diagnostics, not to practices or media like painting or mouse code, materials like canvas or photographic papers, or certain symbolism like Christian iconography or alphanumeric code, but they are virulent in all of them. And this shows a little bit how complex this definition of, of image is. And, and so we have really to go ahead with that. <coughs> complex images, defining further media arts potential, gain their distinctness from their undistinctness. Media arts complexity nowadays is produced through interaction and variability, simultaneity, sequentiality, and narration, connected polydimensional visual spaces of happening, experience and um, immersion can be created, image spaces open for, for unfolding and compression, development or evolution, theoretically like fractals of unlimited resolution to give some keywords. They are created through endless creations of interfaces by ever new display innovations. And in today's social media based image world, definitions have become even more difficult. Images, along with the cultures from which they originated, are on the move. Myriads of images with extreme mobility flow around the globe as messages of transnational and transcultural communication in fractions of a second. Images from formerly separate contexts are occupied, interpreted, amalgamated, and given new meanings. What we are witnessing at the moment is another shift in our image cultures, on the one hand, in the international media, we have a massive concentration of image production. CNN, for example, is, uh, can be seen in more than, two, two, more than 200 countries. And the 10 largest uh, media corporations alone have a performance of more than $300 uh, billion. And on the other hand, our image cultures operate increasingly transculturally, formerly passive recipients who reflected on discrete works of art in a dis distanced yet intellectually active manner have now become interactive users with considerable degrees of freedom in their processing of images. The more open the system of the artwork is constructed, 
And this is what a, what, uh, a contemporary philosophy of art and game theory has to reflect. The more the creative dimension moves towards the normally passive beholders who transform into players and can select from a multitude of information and aesthetic expressions. They can recombine, reinforce or weaken, can interpret and partly even create. The previously critically distanced relationship towards the object, the precondition of aesthetic experience and scientific insight in general as described by Cassira, Adorno or Serre, <coughs> changes towards a field of participative experience. Moreover, they have become active mediators and facilitators of image worlds as well as their producers. In that they increasingly collect, modify, distribute and position images selectively and strategically. New visual information often arises through dialogue in which one or more networks are involved. The mise-en-scene of the images, singly or in clusters, their metamorphosis and their dissemination are significantly determined by the users of social networks. Vibrant subcultures develop unbeknownst with a speed of image turnover that was unimaginable for traditional art theory. Something completely new, image and meaning, often arises from the contradictions, tensions and differences which manifest visually. There are also myriads of image clouds arranged in clusters that overlay the globe like a second visual sphere, we might say. And this is where different ways of seeing the world encounter each other and are actively negotiated or involved in a clash. But this process is nothing new, in, theoretically nothing new, in terms of theories of interculturalism. So the fruitful fusion of Roman and Greek culture, for example, or the Christian and Islamic culture in medieval Spain demonstrated this procedure over long periods of time. But contexts are becoming more and more complicated due to the many uh, different visual media surrounding us. New here is that there apparently is no limit to the acceleration of visual exchange processes, which because of their multifaceted branching and connections cannot be captured or analyzed by the instruments employed by the humanities in the 19th and 20th centuries, of course. So reflecting, therefore, on new tools of, uh, for media art histories in the 21st century, we remember we start to remember um, Warburg's Memosyne Atlas tracking image citations of poses and forms across media and most significantly independent from the level of art nouveau or genre. We might even say that he redefined art history as a medial bridge building, arguing that art history could fulfill its responsibility only by including most forms of images, calling himself already an image scientist. And although taking a different approach, the history of image databases should also mention André Malraux with his Musée Imaginaire. And let us remember too that film studies was started by art historians. The initiative by Alfred Barr and Erwin Panofsky founded, as you know, the enormous film library at New York's MoMA, the Vatican of Film, as it was called by contemporaries. The same spirit for new infrastructures, networks, Virtual museums for the media art of the last decade is needed today. So key projects for the digital humanities. But let us look for a moment beyond the humanities. In the natural sciences, during the last decade, large collective projects could address new research goals, as in astronomy, for example, the Virtual Observatory compiles centuries worth of celestial observations as a collective project. <clears throat> Global warming is understood with international network projects like the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and the Human Genome Project became already legend. So far unknown collective structures based on international and sustainable and sustainable funding give answers to complex problems. And comparable with the national, uh, natural, uh, natural sciences, Digital media and network research catapult also the humanities within reach of new and essential research tools. Linux and Wikipedia might be seen as a glimpse of what can be possible. And what we need are collective documentation and preservation tools for media art. Or even better, an entire history of visual media 
and their human reception by means of thousands of sources, video and 3D simulations. In order to facilitate sustainable progress for the humanities, it is necessary to use the new technologies comprehensively. The motto is don't give up the tradition of individual research, of course, but support it through collective network-based forms of work. In this way, critical analysis can be placed and strengthened on the contemporary broad basis, on a contemporary broad basis. In regard to the image and media revolution, those are key questions for also for our societies, I would say. So during the last decade, and I would like to uh, come up with uh, one example, what, what we did, um, originated at Humboldt University in Berlin um, from 98, uh, the first online media art documentation, the database of virtual art, now Archive of Digital Art, ADA, was founded. As pioneer, it has been documenting in cooperation with renowned media artists, researchers, and institutions the last decades of digital installation art and as a collective open source project. Since digital artworks are processual, ephemeral, interactive, multimedial, as you know, and fundamentally context dependent, because of their different structure, <coughs> they required a modified, we called it an expanded concept for, of documentation. As probably the most co complex media art resource available with several thousand documents and their technical data, ADA represents the scientific selection of uh, 500 artists of um, approximately 5,000 5, evaluated artists. So the policy whether an artist is qualified to become a member is the number of exhibitions and publications, at least five. So as a newcomer, you wouldn't be in there, but uh, as a, somebody who was uh, recognized by other uh, scholars or by people by who, who, who exhibited your work, then you would be welcome. High importance we ascribe also to the artistic inventions like innovative interfaces or um, displays or software. Here, just have a selection. So artists are recommended by, also are, com are recommended by the advisory board with colleagues like Eki Huchtamu, Roy Eskett, Christiane Paul, or Gunalan Nadaria. And now, with the Austrian Science Fund support, uh, supported project ATMA, ADA was developed into the first Web 2.0 research archive, so artists and scholars actively contribute to the living archive and work collectively on documentation and analysis of media art, a proactive process of knowledge transfer. You also can participate, if you like, by making your profile as researcher and then you can see what the others, other researchers do and you can collectively uh, document the artworks or see what, uh, what kind of new projects your colleagues have, etc. In addition to searches of themes, media art documentation should also admit questions of, questions of gender, track the movement of technical staff from lab to lab, technical inventions pertaining to art, the destinations of public and private funds allocated to, to research. And the hybrid character of media art requires a shift of the paradigm towards an orientation of process and context recording, which in includes more and more the capture of the audience experience. And you know that keywording <coughs> can be bridge building too. The hierarchical thesaurus of uh, ADA will constitute an approach to systemize the field of digital art. Out of the Getty Art and Architecture thesaurus and the subject catalog of the Warburg Library in London, keywords were selected which have relevance also in media art. On the, on the other side, out of the most common used terms for media festivals like Ars Electronica, ASEA, Transmediale, etc., new keywords were empirically selected. So important innovations like interface or genetic art have been considered as well as keywords that play a role in traditional arts such as body, landscape, or illusion, and thus have a bridge building function. It was important though to limit the number to approximately 350 words so that the members of the archive <coughs> can uh, keyword their works without great study of a too complex index. So we want to encourage uh, to become member of ADA, create a scholarly profile and tap to enrich the data of this public and cost-free instrument for our field. A second main step <coughs> of contextualizing media art can be done based on an inter internationally unique situation that with the 45,000 prints of the Gottweig collection, 
Ada has an important art historic collection in highest resolution, emphasizing Renaissance and Baroque works on its side, representing a library of 150,000 volumes going back to the 9th century, like the St. Gallen Codex. The Gottweig collection is effectively an index of Renaissance and Baroque visual knowledge. Abbot Basso, in 1672 to 1749, sent his agents all over Europe to buy 35,000 prints in less than 10 years, a visual encyclopedia of almost all available knowledge of the time, <coughs> a unique attempt to collect the world, we might say. So Ada strives to achieve the goal for a deeper media art historical, art historical cross-pollination. And this context will be explored deeper through the Thesaurus Bridge. So just as Media Art History's conference and um, the conference series bridges a gap, the combination of the two and other databases hopes to enable further historic references and impulses. The collection also contains proofs of the history of optical media, intercultural concepts, caricatures, illustrations of landscapes in panoramic illustra illustrations. For the future, this may provide resources for a broader analysis of media art. So this is our uh, approach to contextualize. The collective archive of digital art counts many digital art installations, and it is important to contextualize them within the media art histories. For example, the one of immersion, if you probably have heard, um, a recently recognized phenomenon that can be traced through almost the entire history of art. So media art history has shown that there is cross fertilization between large scale spaces of illusion that fully integrate the human body, like 360 degree frescoes, the panorama, stereopticon, cineorama, IMAX cinemas, or the caves. And on the other hand, you have small scale images positioned immediately in front of the eyes, like peep shows of the 17th century, stereoscopes, stereoscopic television, sensorama, or the head mounted display. So visions of new immersive media, whether for science or art, are not merely reactions to technological innovations. Moreover, we can say that art plays a seminal role in their creation and development. But we have also to consider the histories of artificial life, telematics, of landscapes, panor panoramic or of uh, phantasmagoric imagery, or automata, or the body. There are hundreds of historic traditions, and given that there is a common ground with media art history collections, we might better decipher what is really new in media art. So if we take a look, and I'm coming to the end, if we take a look at uh, media art research over the last 15 years, then it is clear what we need is a concentration of high quality scholarly documentation, as well as a huge expansion of strengths and initiative. In the field of documentation, systematic and systematic concerted preservation campaigns in the digital arts do not exist, as we know, so far. It is essential to unite the most important lessons learned and strategies developed by initiatives, either existing or abandoned on an international platform. Networks of innovative institutions that can guarantee persistent existence. The museum qualified to display sculpture paintings and installations has to develop to fulfill the needs of the 21st century and its, and its culture. So we need a sustainable policy beyond the irresponsible day-to-day -day ideology of Silicon Valley. <coughs> it would need to be supported with adequate expertise from the network of important archives and initiatives. And as expressed in our international media art history, declaration signed by more than 450 scholars from 40 countries, and you're invited, if you like, to put your signature there as well. And you can find it on the platform of, the, of the, uh, mediathistory.org. <coughs> there is urgent need to create stable international platforms of interoperable archives for expertise and support for important <coughs> histories and to internationalize research modes of interpretation and shared resources. But for up-to-date <coughs> digital humanities, also the funding structures must, must be internationalized in ways similar to those enabling modern astronomy, genomics, and or climatology in order to create enough momentum and uh, the necessary sustainability 
responsible sponsors like the National Science Foundation, Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, GEDI, the uh, EU, etc., have to ensure international long-term sustainable structures. So it's nice that we have Horizon 2020, but we need sustainable structures in the digital art research. So only when we develop systematic and concerted strategies of collecting, preservation, and research, we will be able to fulfill the task which digital culture demands in the 21st century. For media art research, a significant commitment has to be made. Let's recall the enormous and sustaining infrastructure that was developed for traditional artistic media, painting, sculpture, architecture, even film. As you know, photography and their corresponding archives over the course of the 20th century. What is needed is an appropriate structure to preserve at least the usual 1 to 6 percent. So I don't say uh, uh, um, cover everything, only 1 to 6 percent, so the most important works that would, would be enough, of, co of course. <coughs> to achieve that, we need a concerted poli policy of collection and preservation on a much larger scale. If we compare the worldwide available budget to preserve and explore traditional art forms, and I will not be cynical and mention what NSA invests into storing our personal data, but if we just compare the budget for traditional art forms, then we understand how inadequate the support for our present digital culture is. It is almost statistically immeasurable. The faster this essential modification to our cultural heritage record can be carried out, the smaller the gap in the cultural memory shedding light on the dark years which started about 1960 and last still now. So working basically with technologies from new giants like Apple, Microsoft, Intel, in a time where we are dominated now also by companies like Google and Facebook, etc., Europe needs perhaps preservation industries. As we see, media arts need, uh, needs as many bridges as possible. <coughs> conferences, new scientific tools like databases and text repositories, new strat strategies uh, new strategies for documentation and visual analysis of complex data, new curricula for the next generation of teachers and collectors. Maybe in the near future we can create collective tools as represented in Christa Sommerer and Laura Mignonot's work, The Living Web, or Jeffrey Shaw's T Visionarium, which generates a spatial information sphere from search engines for web images in a cave. The work represents a new instrument for visual analysis with the option of comparing up to 1,000 images in a scientific discussion. Captivating new visualization tools could provide access to the breadth of digital cultural production, coupled with the depth of historical, optical media, new unpredictable understandings of today's image revolution and the role technology and media play can be enabled. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very, very much for this um, wonderful lecture that is perfectly centered on the focus of our uh, conference this year. Uh, the format of this keynote uh, lecture um, now includes the fact that I will ask you a couple of questions and then we'll open the floor to discussion with the public. And the first <clears throat> question I'd like to ask you has to do with uh, the very notion of uh, media art or digital art. It seems to me that since you published your first very influential book, Virtual Art, in 2003, which <coughs> I recall is the most quoted uh, book on art history uh, of the last 10-15 uh, years, um, since you published that book, which was the culmination of a number of studies that you began in the late 90s, it seems to me that the technological and media landscape uh, within which artistic practice develop uh, have changed uh, profoundly, in the sense that uh, by now uh, most artists, whatever their media they use, 
do use some kind of digital platform, network, or um, technology. So the, the question I'd like to ask you is, uh, is there a new need to redraw the line that distinguishes between what you call digital art and what you call the traditional art forms? Well, well um, I hope that, that we can integrate uh, digital art more and more into our art world, into the museum world, into the archives and, and, and all, all that. So I don't like so much uh, drawing new lines and, and making separations and all that. But of course, I, I, I try to emphasize the role digital art plays in our society today or could play if we would uh, <laughs> uh, allow the institutions to, to, to fulfill their res responsibilities by law. And um, so, um, of, I, I'm, I don't know if digital art 15 years ago um, played a less important role, but um, if we look to the festivals and, and we um, empirically try to, to study that, and then we can see that clearly these big issues, uh, these big problems of mankind, uh, which I mentioned, like globalization and virtualization of finance markets and surveillance and all that, that this is in clusters represented in, in, the, in the festivals, but then somehow it does not in, enter the museum world, since this is still o organized in a o more in an old-fashioned way. And, and so um, I would hope that um, the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the separation or the wall between the, the digital realm and uh, the traditional art media uh, more and more disappears, but unfortunately um, uh, it's, it's, it's still there. So who can help us? There, there um, we may say, okay, um, industry, Google and Microsoft, uh, Apple, you need to pay. You need to um, pay, pay for these new kinds of museums. And, but they are not interested in uh, preservation generally, or preservation of their technology, since they want to sell you every year a new laptop. This is their ideology. And if you go to Silicon Valley, then they uh, think uh, exactly three months ahead. And, and so, so it's the whole idea of sustainability uh, in the digital culture is simply not known there. And if you go to the museum world, then um, you, you talk with directors uh, who have really a small budget and a small team uh, usually and who can deal very well with uh, sculptures and paintings but who are, have not the experience and not the budget and not the technological expertise to, to, to deal with, with all these uh, be, uh, questions coming up with the preservation of digital art. So we may raise that all of that in this question on a, on a higher level and f let me just come up with an example in Germany for example with this uh, federalistic system we could share the responsibilities and say, okay, you museums, you're in Bavaria, you're responsible for the, all the preservation of technology uh, of insulation, uh, digital installations. You in Baden-Württemberg, your re responsibility for bio-art, and you there in Brandenburg for something else. So if we would raise it in a, in a more on a national level or in internationally in, in Europe or so, then, then we would probably come up cl uh, come closer to the, uh, to the, um, to the needed, uh, to the needs of uh, such an infrastructure um, yeah, um, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question I have uh, has to do with uh, the relationship between media art history and media archaeology. Media archaeology being a domain that uh, developed uh, a lot uh, during the last uh, 10, 15 years in Germany, in the Anglophone countries, and recently also in France. Uh, you said uh, at some point of your presentation, media art history includes media archaeology as part of its domain. Hmm. And uh, I was wondering whether the difference between the two would rely in the fact that uh, media archaeology is mostly concerned with the history of technical uh, dispositives, or whether it is also a difference in uh, historiographic models. History. Y historiographic models, mm -hmm. models of historical development. Yeah. In your writings, you use, and you used it also today a lot, the notion of evolution. Whereas it seems to be that most of uh, media archaeological practices, be it through a reference to Foucault or to other authors like Benjamin and so on, refused the idea of evolution and especially any model of linear development. Could we say that perhaps uh, this is one of the points that uh, distinguish your approach from a media archaeological approach? The kind of uh, model of uh, 
historiographic development that you adopt in your work? Well, so I, I, I was working in Berlin for many years, um, with also with Friedrich Kittler, and uh, he was also one of my PhD um, uh, fathers, and like <laughs> Bredekamp too, and, and so on. So what was later on called media archaeology was then uh, media studies and uh, or media, his, media media history and and so so um, when Zielinski and and Huchtamo came up with this term media archaeology it was a catchy term and now it's with Josip Heiker very very very, um, very getting famous but the idea is not new so so this was already um, uh, there since I don't know 25 years or so and. Um, always represented also in this media art history network. So, so those people who look m mostly to the development of technology, of the, of the media itself and, and so on, um, sometimes they don't look, from my p point of view, enough on the content, on the imagery, on the artistic will, so, so to say. Sometimes even the technology is driven, the development of technology or the evolution of technology or sometimes also the re revolutionary steps. I mean, of course, there are also detours and breaks. Uh, I wouldn't say that everything is a co complete in a linear um, um, movement. But um, the development of technology is not just there. It, it, it fulfills the um, um, goals, so to say, or it, it helps to fulfill the goals of, 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 the, of the makers and, and the artists or the industry and, and, and so on. So we always need to, to look to bo on both sides. And in the media art history approach, there's also then the history of science involved and the history of technology. And so it's, it's, it's a little bit, probably a little bit too complex. But media art archaeology, I would say it's a part of media art history. Yeah. The last question I have uh, it, uh, has to do with uh, uh, the question of restoration. Uh, you mentioned uh, the problem that uh, uh, digital art or media art is not archived enough, is not preserved, documented, and displayed in a systematic way, as you instead tried to do with the projects uh, like the ones you showed mm. us. But I wonder whether in your studies you ever encountered the problem of how to eventually restore works of art that, with the passage of time, have somehow become obsolete, non-functioning in the proper way, and so on. I remind that very, very simply said that there are two schools of, uh, two ideas of restoration. One being that uh, when you restore a work, you try to bring it back exactly to the way it was at the moment of its first public presentation. The other instead being a restoration that uh, keeps the sign of the um, following interventions and does not try to hide uh, the restoring act. I wonder if in uh, media art historical studies these issues of restoration have ever been really tackled in, con in concerning digital <coughs> art. Well, uh, I'm an art historian and uh, I don't uh, work in a museum where I would be um, obliged to restore s something. So I never did this and I also don't want to deal with that. Um, I, I, um, um, as, um, I try to, uh, to document um, the artworks and, and the ADA project is, is, uh, has the goal to show th to the museum people if they finally are enabled to preserve digital art, this is what you, what you need uh, to do basically. Or this is, this is the, the, the technology those artworks were made with and so it's a precise techno technological information, the hard and software configuration, the interfaces and the, the displays and, and, and all that. And um, and then there are also um, maybe interviews with the, with the artists uh, ask, uh, asking if your artwork, which now is lost, uh, would be um, recreated in 15 years or so. What is your uh, um, most important uh, aesthetic um, message you want to bring across? Pro perhaps with different technology. Then we don't know what's what what uh, what happen will happen in, in 15 years. <coughs> this is also 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 in there, but. Um, um, yeah, I, 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 this is of course a, the, the, the biggest problem, and um, it's it's getting more and more complex. And uh, so um, it's uh, it's it, it's hard to, to, to answer that uh, so so in a, in, a, in a general way. But b beside this uh, reinterpretation, uh, the strategy which I just mentioned, there's of course also emula em emulation, where you try to bring the software on a on a technologically more advanced system, there's migration, there are other strategies. There are a number of case studies. Actually, there's uh, probably enough knowledge, meanwhile, 
through all these uh, projects, which were funded by EU and, and by other national funding bodies, but there is no concerted, concerted uh, action, and this is uh, and there is no sustainability. So, so these two the, um, 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 points are, I would li like uh, to make with this whole keynote. Thank you so much. <coughs> now let's open the discussion to the audience. I already see a question up there. So um, you talked a lot about complexity, but um, you haven't really said, just also relating to your title, how exactly complexity is expressed. So I think you haven't really um, tackled the issue, what's the relationship between world and image is. So if we can say that we, speaking with Heidegger, no longer live in the age of the world picture, what is this new relationship and how, what is the relationship to complexity? Um, so how, what is the relationship to representation? I think that is something you haven't really talked about much and I was wondering if you had um, any comments on that. Yeah, may maybe I have a more simple approach um, than, than you have. So I, I um, try to come up with all these complex issues of our time, so like the finance market, and, and, and then show how artists uh, deal with it, or that they deal with it at all, and, and, and try to have uh, some message. I mean, I could have gone in every artwork in, in much deeper detail and, 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 and uh, shape a more uh, how complexity in, in, in this case is, is, uh, is developed or expressed. But I, I tried more to, to, uh, to the, uh, um, draw a, a general picture and show that art, art media artists, digital artists deal with all these complex issues. And uh, I c um, we might not uh, Im imagine a, a painting or so or a sculpture dealing with the finance market and, and or uh, with um, the DNA and, 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 and all these, these, uh, these questions. But at this, I don't know if it was a, probably not an answer to your question uh, in, in the, f in the broad in the full sense, but um, this was my approach. Thank you very much for your lecture. Uh, I have a question and, and some kind of comment. Uh, a lot of artworks you presented of artistic projects uh, are deeply involved in critical analysis of contemporary digital culture. And usually they use very, very innovative and up-to-date tools. And maybe this is the problem, because uh, when we try to critically engage with the culture, which is uh, focused on pragmatic and effective use of technology, uh, then there is a contradiction between uh, the distant look at technology and critical uh, look at technology and a kind of technological hype. Don't you think that this is the reason why uh, this uh, moguls actually, like Google or Facebook, are not completely interested in financing uh, digital art? Uh, don't you think that this is the reason? Because uh, this is not uh, something that is good for their business. Is good for what? For their business. This yeah, is of course not. Yeah, sure, sure. It's criticizing them. I mean, if, if you have uh, Alessandro Lunovico who's coming up with this dating website, and um, he's even lo lawsuit with, with Facebook. <laughs> and so, of course, they will not finance it. They will, they will finance the lawyer who brings them to jail. <coughs> and and if, uh, if, if you to, uh, look at this from Paolo Sirio, this, this artwork where he um, um, tries to un uncover all these uh, offshore companies and, and shows what, what a big uh, um, way to, uh, to, to save tax or to cheat uh, all, our, all, all of our uh, um, states is, then of course um, you will not find uh, big support um, by, by, the, by, the, um, by the big finance companies also who's doing, who, are, who are doing that. And so, so this, uh, but um, it is also not, not, not the job, um, I don't hope for that there come up some oligarchs and they might, who, who are my um, represent, uh, representatives from uh, Apple or from offshore companies or, or whatever. Our public realm, the museum world, the archives, they are responsible to, to, to do that. And, and if they are not 
capable to do that, then, then we need to reorganize this, this structure. They need to develop into uh, some uh, um, storing institutions which are able to um, collect and to uh, restore the, cu uh, the, uh, the, the culture of the 21st century. So, so the museum of the 19th and 20th century, well um, uh, uh, um, capable of to collect uh, sculpture, etc., needs to de uh, develop into a kind of a, um, a um, science center, uh, has some science, science center elements, of, of, uh, uh, computer center elements, then it needs to be a, a larger um, a network where with, with, with shared responsibilities, what I just tried to describe before. But, um, we can, um, but this is what our public uh, needs, needs to develop so, so that we can again discuss um, the big issues of our time also through art, which, were, which we were used to, to do all the, all the 80s and 70s and 60s and, and so on. So, so we, were, we were used to do that, but, but now um, we, on the one hand we are completely um, uh, um, uh, under surveillance of, of NSA and, and, and maybe other um, China and Russia and, and so on uh, secret services on, on, the, on the one hand and, but we don't have the ability as in, in our democracy to participate um, on, on these big questions through art and so, so we need to regain this. <laughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, not only I completely subscribe to your plea, but I recognize the obstacles. And uh, um, the question I'd like to, to, um, to pose is the following. In the Netherlands, uh, um, we've, I've been um, involved in a number of projects to um, find answers to this question, who is responsible and how can we uh, tackle uh, a sustainable uh, uh, pr preservation of digital, with digital art as a part of it. There are actually two uh, um, coalitions, long names, Digital uh, Coalition for uh, Sustainable Preservation and the Cultural Coalition for Sustainable uh, Preservation. In, uh, in two years of discussion, one thing became very clear. With uh, museums, so all museums are involved, yeah. films, uh, television, art museums, it's not clear what is the best strategy? So we've come up with some ideas, but I think there is, besides a budget problem, of course, <laughs> I think there is also really a quite um, a big confusion about there is a, a hope, especially from the, 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 the government, that someone centrally in the most efficient, economically efficient way can store all the digital. But there is uh, uh, actually the, the know-how is dispersed, as we know, uh, in, especially in terms of preservation. Do you, or the, the, the projects you are involved with have um, scenarios or ideas on in which di directions this uh, collaboration among institutions or division of the tasks can be organized? Mm, no. <laughs> no, this is not our job. So, so, so this is the job of the museum people. So, so, so we can show them this is all there. So actually, as, we, as I said, we evaluated 5,000 artists and 500 we have represented with um, sometimes 10, sometimes 100 artworks, which all shown all over the world. And, uh, and here's what you need. Here's the technology and, and here's the software, software hardware, et cetera. And, but this is not our job to, 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 to make the museums so also the, 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 uh, their, their job. And, and so, but of course, we, we just can say, um, the museum itself is not, not, not in the position to do that, too small structures, not enough, not enough uh, people, not enough expertise, not enough uh, budget, etc. So we may, may go on a higher level. And then it's discussion, it's, it's, it's up to them. So if they, as I said, we develop in kind of science centers um, with a lot of uh, technology in, in, in there, and, and, or if, if they were developed in, towards networks, and, or maybe, maybe the state has to, say, has to tell, tell them, okay, um, you continue with what you have done in the past, and now, additionally, um, you are part of this network in Bavaria or wherever, in Umbria or so, and, 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 and then, um, then go ahead. <laughs> but it, it, it starts already, the, there is, um, with a political will, and it's so. If I, I was um, um, three a um, couple of months ago, I was in a conference at the Jewish Museum in Berlin, 
and talked to the new um, Minister of Culture in Germany and asked, the, asked her, yeah, you are, um, so now you're in the position uh, to um, put the museums also in, in, into the position that they can deal with this issue of, since now, since at the moment we lose everything. And, and then, then she said, no, we lose, we don't lose everything, we have the ZKM. And so the only one um, institution, is, as you probably all know, and they have half a position for digitizing videos there, so, and so on. And, and so they have no idea. And, and, um, but on the other hand, um, was at the G20 summit in uh, Korea a couple of years ago, and uh, could also draw on, on this uh, problem a little bit. And, and there was a lot of understanding uh, to, to, to do something. But um, it's, yeah, <laughs> we have to continue to, 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 to raise that question. There was another question. Um, yeah. yeah, a question from our keynote of tomorrow, mm -hmm. Marija Lewandowska. Oliver, thank you so much for this, at least for me, a very enlightening uh, contribution. But I want to take you to task and, in fact, challenge this whole idea that it is exactly the museum that you need to um, try and persuade to, to take those works. It seems to me that the museum is a 19th century technology and totally inappropriate, really, for the works that are challenging politically mm -hmm. and uh, very often work along the lines of uh, distributed practices, hacktivism, everything that the museum doesn't really um, offer us yeah. um, as a site and as a conceptual space. So I just wonder if there is I think there is a space to start thinking about new types of institutions mm -hmm. that are not based on the model of a museum and maybe not on a kind of traditional model of the archive as well. And I'm sure there's many people in, in this space, in this room, who are working along those lines. Yeah. Um, and the one other thing to say about museums, that they are disappearing as places of public exchange. They are mainly now private institutions and uh, they really have interests and are driven by interests that are not in the interest of the public. Yeah. So you really don't want them to um, lock you in with those kind of works. Yeah, you have, thank you very much. It was a brilliant com commentary and, and I agree to 99.5% of what, 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 what you said, and uh, but the museums still represent the institutions which receive the money, although it's not a lot. But but uh, from to preserve our culture, and, and and so of course we need to um, reorganize the museums, and, and they have to evolve into something adequate. And and you may you may not call it museum in in, in the end, and it might be also um, web connected and and with with uh, the ability that you see at home uh, or that you will have some devices at home and then you can um, immerse yourself in some installation or into a re, uh, new form of installation which was originally shown in, in the late 80s and, and I, I don't know, there's, everything is, 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 is thinkable and, and, and possible. But we have to go towards the change, <laughs> the, 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 this, this change and, 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 and uh, I, I can imagine that here in the room there, that there are many uh, proposals, and as you said, there are many people uh, work a, a, along this, this line, and, and, and so I'm, uh, I'm waiting for the, for, the, uh, for, 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 the, for the political will, and, and I don't know how it's, how it's in Poland or how it's in generally and in, in how it's in, in other countries. So in, in, in Germany, it would be great if the ministry would start um, an, uh, an interview or, or, or sending a, um, I call it a questionnaire <laughs> to all the museums and ask them how many uh, artworks, in, in which, which some include some digital elements, do you have in your collection? And what are you doing to preserve them? The answer will be zero, <laughs> almost zero. Maybe there are some video collections here and there, but, but if, if, if it comes to installations and or bio art or or um, a more um, um, sophisticated uh, technologies, then, then there is nothing. So, so video is more even nowadays used by uh, museums as an excuse. So we have also media art in our collection, but it's relatively trivial technology um, compared to what, 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 what's out since uh, 20, 30 years. And, and, and we also have to tackle that. Yeah. 
Thank you for the comments. <clears throat> yes. I see a question up there. We have time, I guess, for one or two questions before the general meeting. Yeah, um, just to come back with this idea of museum, and uh, as you told, uh, how many museums in, in Germany, for example, are dealing with those works and preserving them. I think it, the idea of the museum having the money to do it is not maybe still uh, up to date. And uh, I have not so much experience on it, but I have the feeling that uh, many museums try to get those works to have one more different things than what they already are, but do not uh, hire other staff. So they ask uh, people working with traditional pieces or media, but not digital art, to work with digital art without really having the um, training and the formation to deal with them. So often you have the case that they ask someone else, like the ZKM or other institution like that, to do the preservation, and they just host the piece in a way. And the ZKM digitized and preserved it, and they host the piece to show it. So I think maybe indeed it's interesting to make a call for a new digital art museum and then maybe museum is not anymore the right con concept to be used. But mm -hmm. um, So to make those work possible to travel around museum, but maybe to be host in one places where you have uh, staff which can really evolve with the works. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's maybe what is still missing uh, in all museums, small or big, today. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the comment. Um, but, was, but this was no question, it was more a comment. Yeah, it was a yeah. comment about what you okay. were saying. Okay, thanks. <coughs> well, was there one last one? No. Is there a last question? <coughs> Pietro Schepani. Uh, what uh, consequences uh, of um, these, uh, the, the lack of uh, preservation and um, you know, um, collection building does it have for the uh, media art practice itself uh, in, in terms of uh, lacking the canons and traditions being preserved? Because you, as we know, it's extremely important for uh, modern art to uh, reflect on traditions, to distance itself and so on. And uh, just, just a side question to it, uh, do, do you know any uh, uh, digital media art parodies of digital pa media? Uh, did you know any parodies? Parodies? Par parody. What's that? Parody. Parody. Pa parodies? Yeah. Parodies. Oh. Because parodies are, uh, you know, uh, moments when uh, the tradition is interrupted and looks at itself like back in, in, in terms of also historicizing itself. Mm -hmm. So um, is there any digital media art parody of, uh, of media art? Well, let me think about this. But first, uh, I'll answer the first part of, of the question. So it, it has very tragic uh, consequences since um, not that we lose all that, and as we may even see that it's the, the largest um, loss in art history and by ignorance or by technological um, in, in capability and by a dysfunctional uh, um, collection uh, structure, as, we, as I described. <clears throat> it also has consequences to the, for, the, for the media artists themselves, for the, for the, for the, for the students, that um, they have to think um, w uh, during, during the studies already uh, what, what kind of uh, strategies for preservation they, they want to, uh, they have to um, uh, face when, when, when they um, come up with, with, with uh, when, when they use certain technologies or when they try to develop certain technologies, maybe um, technolog uh, complex uh, technologies. And, and, and so, so many artwor uh, artworks or, uh, or technologies used to create artworks in the past uh, are not used anymore or many branches are, are, not, are not, not used anymore. So we may say that there's a simplification of, um, of, of the artworks, so a ro fall, they fall back basically and so, so, so to make sure that uh, the artworks last longer, that they last, um, might, might be uh, uh, longer and able to, to, um, uh, to, uh, to, be, in, in, uh, to be shown. And um, yeah, so, so and, and this is a qu a quite uh, problematic uh, situation where, where um, the artists know um, that in, in order that they that they can uh, sell something, they they have to 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 plan something which is which is more more simple. So now, 
even these artists like Christa Sommerer or, or, or others who some years ago used these big silicon graphics uh, workstations for one million dollar, which of course ridiculously um, uh, no museum can buy. And then it was, uh, um, 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 they, they come up, came up with new versions where, where on a PC level where museums theoretically could, 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 could have this in, the, in, 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 their, um, in, the, in the museum. And, and now they even uh, produce computer graphics, so which was done in the 60s. And to, to, to reapproach the art market, which has different uh, interests and, uh, and, and shouldn't be uh, um, <laughs> at, at, at bad. Uh, if, if, if media art is uh, qualified to go to the museums, uh, etc. So it's a simplification, and there's a very uh, difficult situation. And uh, ironic, um, uh, well, I don't have a, maybe somebody else knows anyone? No? This may, this may say something. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you so much. Yes.